At the party, a pretty girl showing up instantly shocks Lizzie so much that she gets goosebumps. She suspects that the little girl is her daughter who died seven years ago because she looks so much like her. Lizzie eagerly runs after the girl, only to be stopped by a prankster. By the time she dries the wine stains on her dress, the girl is long gone. The next day, she drives to the elementary school and finds the girl. Lizzie snaps some pictures of her. She stalks her in her car and doesn't stop until she's in front of her house. Then she goes to the parents' house and picks up her son as if nothing had happened. But she can't get the little girl out of her head. While her son is sleeping, she sneaks into the girl's house and spies on her from the shadows. The little girl is dancing happily at the pool. As she spins around, she sees Lizzie, terrified. She slips into the water and tries desperately to get out. Seeing that her parents are indoors and completely unaware of the crisis, Lizzie jumps into the pool to save her. However, the girl grabs her head and presses it underwater. Unable to breathe, she struggles and emerges violently from the water. Luckily, it is just a nightmare, but it made her condition worse. She takes two pills to try and regain her composure. It turns out Lizzie has been suffering from mental illness for years. She used to have a happy family of four. But seven years ago, her baby girl was killed in a fire in the hospital. Seeing that she couldn't get over it, her husband divorced her. Whenever she forgot to bring her son home, her ex-husband Mike would drop him off at her doorstep. However, Mike isn't going to sympathize with her this time. For the good of his son, he wants to get custody of him and keep him out of Lizzie's darkness. But Lizzie refuses to let him go. She tries to devote her time to her son. But it can't get her mind off that little girl. She looks so much like her daughter. So Lizzie chooses to get close to the girl to see if there's a hidden agenda. When she learns that the girl's house is for sale, she brings her son, Thomas, with her. She says hello to the girl's mom, Claire, and lies about wanting to buy the house. It just so happened that the two women's sons are in the same class. So Claire lets her guard down and warmly invites them in. Thomas runs off to play with the kids in the pool. Claire shows her the main part of the house. Lizzie seems very interested in the house, as if she's seriously considering buying it. In fact, she observes the little girl every chance she gets, deliberately prying for information about the girl's age, etc. Being a mother as well, Claire doesn't see anything unusual in her behavior. Claire then introduces Lizzie to her husband, Bernard. They hope Lizzie will buy the place, because they are planning to move to Australia. After the swim, the little girl, Lola, happily wraps her arms around her father and says hello to Lizzie. Lizzie praises her for a good swim. Lola thanks her and quickly runs away. In order to have more interaction with her, Lizzie uses the excuse of going to the restroom to walk away. She goes upstairs, out of sight of the others, and enters Lola's room. Seeing her moping, Lizzie asks her if she'll miss it when she moves out of here. Somehow the girl feels good about her and doesn't reject her. Lizzie takes out a comb and brushes her hair, asking don't you think we look alike? Lola is amused. To avoid being suspected of being away for too long, Lizzie returns to the living room and calls Thomas home. Thomas likes this family and asks if he can go ice skating with them on Wednesday. Lizzie declines, pretending she doesn't want to intrude. It is only when Claire invites her to join her that Lizzie agrees. Then she takes Thomas to her parents' house. They want her to find a new boyfriend and maybe that will help her get over it. Well, it's not like Lizzie didn't try. To keep them from being disappointed, she dated other men. But she never managed to open up to them. All that physical pleasure couldn't cover up her sadness. All this socializing only made her more lonely. But she won't talk to her parents about it because she's afraid they'll worry. Thomas tells his grandparents that Lizzie will buy a big house and they won't be stuck in a small apartment. Lizzie immediately says she can't afford it and is just going to look around and have fun. Thomas gets frustrated with her. He calls her a liar, always promising things she can't deliver. He used to think his mother would move on. Once they move into the big house, his mother will get better and his father will come back to him. But now it seems that Lizzie still spends her days in a sad, trance-like, forgetful state. He doesn't want to live like this anymore and says he wants to move in with his father. This drives Lizzie crazy. On Wednesday, she keeps her promise to her son and takes him to the skating rink to play with Claire's kids. But her attention soon turns entirely to Lola. She gets on the skates and teaches Lola what to do to skate more steadily. She puts her hands on either side of Lola's body to protect her as she moves forward. Lizzie believes that Lola is her own daughter and can't resist kissing her on the cheek. However, this moment of distraction brings big trouble. A man shoots out in front of them, knocking Lola down. Claire, who is on the phone, rushes onto the ice and holds Lola in her arms. She won't let Lizzie touch Lola and accuses her of skating too fast. Lizzie offers to make it up to her. She says she'll take care of the kids for Claire for the weekend. Claire turns it down and quickly takes the kids away. After all, Lizzie had lost Claire's trust in light of the accident. When she returns home, Lizzie has a nervous breakdown. She feels that all the bad times are brought on by bad luck, and that the pills won't help her at all. So she throws the pills down the toilet and flushes them away. At her psychiatric appointment, she lies and says she doesn't think about her daughter anymore. However, as soon as she gets out of the hospital, she goes to Claire's house. Claire sees her waving to her daughter. Puzzled, she opens the door and walks out, but she suddenly disappears. This makes Claire think she's not normal. Lizzie stalks them to a theater. There's a ballet performance going on. 
Lola is very nervous. Lizzie comes up behind her and comforts her. She asks her about her birthday. She puts her hand on Lola's little face and caresses her. Lola is confused and doesn't understand why she cares so much about her. But she has no time to ask more questions because she is about to dance on stage with her peers. During the performance, she sometimes turns her head to look at Lizzie, who is hiding in the backstage. Whenever she cast her eyes towards her, Lizzie would make an encouraging gesture. Claire, sitting in the audience, senses that something is wrong with her. As soon as the music ends, Claire gets up and goes to look for her. Bernard comes to the door of the theater and waits for them. Suddenly, he sees Lizzie and stops her. He asks her if she's not going to buy the house. Lizzie apologizes and says yes, I can't swing the mortgage. Bernard says he understands it. He thinks Lizzie is a nice person and invites her to their going away party on Saturday. At that moment, Lola spots him and runs into his arms. When Claire comes out, she sees Lizzie standing next to her daughter and husband. Suspicious, she asks Lizzie why she's here. Lizzie nervously says she likes to watch the ballet. But that fails to assuage Claire's concerns. Especially when Lola asks her, did you see me looking over at you? Lizzie fears she'll be caught out if she says any more, so she makes her excuses and leaves. Claire notices that she's been acting oddly these days. The next day, Claire comes to her workplace to talk to her. Claire asks her why she keeps approaching her family if she never intended to buy a house. Lizzie stops hiding. She confesses that her daughter died in a hospital fire seven years ago, but every time she saw Lola, she became more convinced that her daughter wasn't dead. Lola looks so much like her baby girl. She is positive that Lola is her daughter. Claire immediately thinks she's got a problem. How could she have such an outrageous idea? Claire affirms that Lola is her daughter, born in a different hospital, and has nothing to do with Lizzie. She suggests that Lizzie get therapy from a psychiatrist, and warns Lizzie to stay away from her family. But that neither convinces Lizzie nor scares her off. Her instincts tells her that Lola is her daughter. When Claire isn't there, Lizzie goes to a children's party in the park. She finds Lola, takes her to a boat and rows away from the crowd. She gives Lola a weird story to tell. She tells Lola that she once had a little girl, but she had an accident and didn't remember her. Then she asks Lola if she remembers her. Lola shakes her head and has no idea what she's doing. Meanwhile, Claire learns from a friend that her daughter has gone for a walk with Lizzie. A bad feeling comes over her. She anxiously drives to the party at full speed. By the time she arrives at the park, Lola is already back from the lake. She goes to Lola and nervously asks if Lizzie touched her. Lola lies. She doesn't say anything about Lizzie touching the indent above her lips. After leaving the party, Lizzie goes to her parents' house to pick up her son. She unexpectedly finds that even her ex-husband and her therapist are waiting for her. In response to the fact that she had once again left her son at school, she lies that she just had an emergency at work. The parents break down her lies. Her boss had just called to tell them that Lizzie had been fired because she'd been skipping work. People realized she's in a worse state mentally and want to put her in a psychiatric hospital for treatment. Lizzie has to come clean about Lola. She says her daughter isn't dead. She's alive. The girl who was cremated seven years ago wasn't her daughter at all. After hearing that, everyone is convinced that she's completely insane. No one believes her, not even her parents. Mike decides to take his son away from her so that she won't continue to have a negative influence on him. Even if she is reviled and abandoned, Lizzie will never stop searching for the truth. She calls the hospital to investigate Claire's delivery. But the hospital said patient records could only be shared with immediate family. She decides to prove to everyone that she's not crazy and that Lola is her daughter. She sneaks into Claire's house, where a going away party is being held. Claire finds her hiding in the bathroom. Lizzie stops beating around the bush and makes it clear that she wants a paternity test for Lola. Claire is furious. She throws her out and warns her not to come back or she'll call the police. Lizzie walks out without getting into a confrontation with her. She goes back to her car and waits for the right moment. When all the guests leave and Claire cleans up, she sneaks into the house and goes up to the second floor. She enters Lola's room and tries to cut Lola's hair for a paternity test. To her surprise, there is no one but a doll under the covers. It turns out that Claire had sent the children to her friend's house for fear of danger. Claire locks the door and sets the alarm after she's finished working. The alarm detects that someone is in the room and makes a sound. Claire alertly follows the sound up to the second floor. She walks into Lola's room and turns on the light to check it out. As Lizzie is hiding, she leaves without noticing anything unusual. Worried that the alarm would go off again, Lizzie is too afraid to go out, so she hides in the closet for the night. The next morning, Bernard leaves to pick up the kids. With the door open, the alarm system is deactivated. Lizzie sees the alarm go off and gets out of the closet. She searches for anything with Lola's DNA on it. Soon she finds a hairbrush full of hair and took it with her. Just as she tiptoes to the front door, Claire spots her in the mirror. The two women instantly get into a fight. Claire, a regular gym-goer, quickly gains the upper hand. She picks up a pair of scissors and puts them around her neck. Given that Lizzie was trespassing, she could have killed her in self-defense. But instead of stabbing her, she threatens her to get the hell out of her life. 
To her astonishment, Lizzie says she won't stop until she's dead. She roars that she will get Lola's DNA and prove that Lola is her biological daughter. She calls Claire a thief and a liar. And when she does, she's going to show Claire's disgusting, ugly face to the public. Claire's defenses eventually crumble under her forceful, sustained verbal assault. Claire cries and reveals the truth. Turns out the girl who died in a fire seven years ago was Claire's biological daughter. When the fire started, there was flames and smoke all over the ward and Lizzie choked and fainted. When Claire was escaping, she heard crying inside the crib. She followed the cries to Lola and saved her. To ease the pain of losing her own daughter, Claire then carried Lola away and possessed her. Anyway, her husband wasn't there when she went into labor, so he didn't know what his daughter really looked like. Lizzie is speechless with shock when she learns the truth. Claire pleads with her not to take Lola away. She gets so involved in telling her how much she loves her child that she doesn't notice her family standing in the doorway for a long time. Hearing everything, shortly after, the police officer gets to Mike and tells him the truth. He runs and hugs Lizzie tightly and apologizes to her. The two get back together. After the trial, Bernard gives Lola back to Lizzie. Lizzie looks at a haggard Claire sitting in the car. As a mother, I think she understands Claire, but that doesn't mean she has to forgive her. Anyway, she doesn't want to think about the loss or gain, she just wants to make it up to her daughter. Looking at Lola's fear, she offers to let Claire's son accompany her to meet her grandparents. Seeing her being so considerate, Lola lets go of her fear and takes the initiative to integrate into the new family. With the return of the baby girl, the Lizzie family will be able to overcome their trauma and start a happy life together. This is Rainbow Movie. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.